we start to talk about technique, when someone is asking about technique, what technique you are rowing, what technique people are rowing, what different technique different countries are rowing, we always have to think in terms of how people moving in boat, m movement of the boat, and movement of people within the boat. Also, analyzing different people, different nations, different boats, we can see a lot of differences. Some boats are very successful with very short stroke, some are successful with long stroke, some stop hands at finish, some uh, have very fast hands out. Some way we are successful. So each of these boats are doing something right. But if we really start to analyze all these boats, we find we can find that there is some kind of natural technique. That's probably 60 or 70 percent people are rowing natural technique. Nothing is exaggerated. If we take, for instance, young person who never row, and we put him on a rowing tank, and without any instruction, we ask him just sit down and row, we, de we definitely will find out that he will start to row probably very correctly. In the moment when we start to coach him, we confuse him, and he will be lost. Going back to some analysis of rowing, and we mentioned before that first point, how we should analyze rowing technique should be to analyze uh, movement of the boat, movement of people in the boat, speed of the boat, movement in relation to the boat. And it shouldn't be any motion in the boat should not be exaggerated. Uh, cut should be in relation to the speed of the boat just enough, quick enough to lock blade in very direct without any slowing down, without hanging, without slamming down later on, just very direct motion back down into the water, locking in, moving, driving legs, swimming, pushing boat away, and comfortable way, very relaxed, beginning of recovery. Gliding slide, body preparation, approaching, approaching catch. We shouldn't see any dramatic changes of the speed of our movement in the boat. We should move way in boat that we don't disturb run of the boat. The boat is running and we want to each stroke, we want to push boat a little bit further, push boat a little bit further, but we are doing everything very nicely, very smoothly. So we don't want to disturb this run of the boat. We, we are going to show you some examples of this rowing very smoothly, good blade work without splashes, locking in, pushing boat, very relaxed. This crew is 1984 Olympic 8, and it was, picture was taken in Hanover, one of the workouts. They rode 32, and you can notice that it doesn't look like 32, it looks like 28, because it's so smooth. It is, motion is very good relation to the speed of the boat.
second point of our rowing analysis should be body work within the boat, individual technique. I know there are some opinions, oh, let's not pay attention to, to body, it's not important how they, how they work, but some way, correct body, correct body swim, correct uh, body movement in the boat, all eight people moving the same way, it is additional force, it is much more rhythm, it makes this movement much easier. And guys feel when they feel, oh, it's so easy, it's so light, so easy, because they move together. And sometimes people row many, uh, many years together, sometimes, and they miss each other in body motion. There is no swing, there is no uniform body motion in, in, in the boat, and boat is not right. Uh, we start to analyze individual technique right now, and we concentrate just on crucial point in and crucial position during rowing cycle in the rowing in our technique, natural power technique. First position, and in my opinion, the most important position, I call this body preparation is position just after beginning of slide. Characteristics. Arms stretch nicely forward, past knees. There is body angle. Horseman is leaning, leaning forward. Very relaxed shoulders, very relaxed upper body. Good flexibility. Slight letter C. Relaxed body position. Head is looking straight forward. And he cover only probably quarter of slide. That's beginning of our recovery. That's what I call body preparation, body angle, before we start recovery, at the beginning of recovery. In my opinion, that's the most important because if we have this good body preparation, we can eliminate many mistakes which might occur later on especially diving, could be avoided if we uh, have our body set before we approach catch. Go ahead. Now we see continuation of the slide, continuation of recovery. Rower, bridge, middle of the slide, probably, is the middle point of the slide, his arms are stretched, he reached a little bit further forward, more body angle. He also got a little bit more curve of his shoulders. We can say that his reach is already finished. So, in the middle of slide, this rower already finished his reaching forward. It means that next part of his slide is going to be continuation of sliding on on seat without reaching forward. Approaching catch. Body position hasn't changed. It is the same curve relax, the same relaxed shoulders, the same arm stretch. It's a little bit more compression on his legs. It means that last part of the slide it was covered without changing body with a position, without reaching out, without diving forward. He is approaching catch, he's covering the last part of the slide, only with the idea of raising hands later on and putting blades into the water. Position of the catch. Nicely curved body, exactly precisely like on previous picture. Full compression of his legs, arms stretched, lifted up, blade is going down into the water. There is no lifting shoulders. It's only lift of his hands. Shoulders position hasn't changed. Body position hasn't changed. His blade are getting down into the water by lifting hands. On this picture,
picture, we are approaching half of the drive. We see that still there is no op body opening. He was pressing his knees down, but whole unit without any changes was moving backwards. His shoulders are curved nicely around like on previous picture, like the moment of the catch. It's the same body angle between upper part of body, like in moment of the catch, only legs are down a little bit. Arms are stretched. This bag is prying because of leg drag. Characteristic, the most important thing of this picture to remember is there is still no body opening, just holding body and driving legs, moving, whole unit is moving backwards without jerking shoulders or head up. Approaching the end of stroke, legs are almost down, still there is about 120 degrees left. We see that body is changing angle. It's the beginning of opening, beginning of uncoiling body. Bag is prying, it's nicely curved, arms are stretched, legs are on the way down, but body, upper body starts to work. It's taking over. It's introduced to our rowing cycle right now. Sometimes we call this position transition, point of transition, transition from leg drive into some kind of body swing. That's the beginning of body swing. He, he is a little bit straighter and he will start his pendulum of his body, he will start his swing simultaneously with the end of his leg drive. Uh, beginning of, of, of the finish of the stroke, there is not too much legs left. It's just the last kick of knees down. Beginning of squeezing arms. <clears throat> we still notice that the body weight of this rower is praying, is moving towards bow that he suspended a foot stretcher and on the oar handle. If I cover this part, you, you, can, you can have impression that he's hanging in the air. All pressure is on foot stretches and on the oar handles. It's important position to remember that we, are con we continue to swing and we are squeezing arms. Yeah, good. Body position at the, at the finish. Knees are down. A little bit lay back, but not too much. Very natural position. Shoulders are nicely curved. There is no exaggeration in this position. There is no too much lay back. There is no tension on chest. Elbows a little bit through the body. Very important point. Hands are in front of the body, in front of the chest, not too much through, not here. Blades is over water. Very relaxed, very natural position. That's what we should see. I'm going to show later on pictures of all good crews, and we'll see that almost everyone has this type of body position which shows relaxation and readiness to start to begin recover. Mm -hmm. And here we are back to beginning of our rowing cycle, body preparation, beginning of recovery, nicely curved shoulders, arms stretched, and we are taking slowly slide. 
whenever we start to teach rowing technique or rowing stroke, first of all, I'm trying to describe and define the stroke and to create some kind of image of the stroke. So when we start to correct our athletes, in some fine point of the stroke, they know exactly what we are talking about. They know how it should look like and why it's not good right now. And if it's defined correctly and taught correctly, it's very, it should be very easy to execute and to perform. Cycling motion, and we know, we all know about rowing, stroke, and we can talk hours, hours. It's very simple. I will try to go very, very quickly through the stroke. Uh, usually, starting point for me and crucial point in analyzing on every rowing stroke is beginning of stroke. If I want to define beginning of stroke, somewhere here with arms stretched, some body angle, not too much. If we are, if you have too much body angle, it's very uncomfortable to take slide. If we don't have any body angle, if we are at this position, we start slide, it's obvious we are going to dive later on. So, analyzing rowing stroke and analyzing individual technique, I always look at body preparation at beginning of slide, for me, that's the most important. I would like to see very relaxed shoulders, not hands, quite arc bodies, some kind of letter C, some body angle, but still com very comfortable. And that's, for me, that's quite good prepared body. Now, I can start slide, extending and finishing my body preparation, finishing my reaching out by middle of slide, the last part just to slide, raise your hands, drop blade into the water, drive. Do not change anything, drive legs from middle start open, finish and come to this position. It's very smooth motion, very natural, not overdoing any part of the stuff. Body preparation, slide, reaching out, catch, driving, opening, opening, back. Of course, immediately, there will be some questions. How much leg? Natural leg. I'm rowing right now with feet out, and I don't have any problem. I just natural leg. Not too much because you can see right now that it's useless to go so much. Also, you will be pumping your knees up and your seat will be coming forward instead of staying still. So, very, some kind of way that hands out, they pull shoulders forward. Very natural motion, very smooth motion. and we watch some crews and we see this type of stroke which is very, very common. Good, good first part like this and then good and here they stop swinging and they wait for the hands to arrive. You can see that from this moment my body is not working. All my weight is on seat. And I'm waiting here for all to come. Very often they do this motion, something like that. They are not using body. Very good, good crews, you can see that everyone is hanging, keeping weight on the oar to very end. 
to describe this principle Fairbank used to say about lifting almost from sea. You can lift yourself from sea. Oh, you can lift yourself from the sea. Yeah. That was quite exaggerating. <laughs> but come here, place blade, and you should see tension on your lats. We are not trying to lift ourselves on seat and pressing down. Sit. No, we are prepared. So we are, you can see this arm stretch, leg drag is stretching my arm. It's almost pulling my arm out of the shoulder. And I insist, I'm crying with my lats backwards. So it's very horizontal stroke. It is not... It is an insisting, especially here, an insisting, accelerating this is not the artillery of ladies of the world. If you look some good crews, I would say this year, Harvard crew had very good finish, very good acceleration. Using body, especially once you pass perpendicular here. Now you can accelerate. You leverage. Your body is going backwards and your blade is accelerating until it comes out. So practically hanging on the oar and driving legs is our principle of applying forces to the oar. How to get this? How to teach? Yeah. So going again to our knowing that now about the principle of Henry, we go once more, one more time through our stroke and we try to repeat again and to define all elements and all characteristics of our stroke. We start body preparation, very relaxed, taking slides, gliding slide, no rushing. Coming here, the last two inches, making touch by raising hands, placing, putting weight on foot stretches in the, on our hand loop. But after we feel this resistance of the water, after we place blade in the water, hanging, driving, from here, somewhere here, halfway through, about 120 degrees of our leg, we start opening gradually, upper body is taking over, we hang, and here it's very important moment, hanging, swinging, and squeezing arms together, not overemphasizing one group of muscles, it has to, arms application has to be done simultaneously, what is happens sometimes, very often people, when they start, squeeze arms, they stop swinging, and they stop body. So they look like this. No, we should be able to swing, apply, hands out, and keep rolling and slide.
let's analyze his technique. It's very good, steady motion. is quite well prepared in the middle of, of the slide. If I want to be very picky, I would like him to be a little bit more extended to have this arm, inside arm, a little bit more stretched out. But there is some body angle, like we talked before, and he is in probably in half slide. Some arc body John Smith, number two, I would say it's a little bit better prepared. I like his arms position, and he has a little bit more body angle. We are approaching catch. We see that body angle is not changing. It is the same body angle. They just slide a little bit forward on, on slides, continue slide without Ext additional extension. Catch. There was no lifting shoulders on catch. We can see that we stop our picture in the moment of the catch. There are some splashes over here. Feel already starts hanging on the oar as much as well as John. Only hands will raised to put blade into the water. First part, not too much opening. Canning, but without opening body, just driving legs. John has even better position, arms, his arms are stretched very nice. Unfortunately, Phil turned his head of this stroke towards camera. Middle of Middle of drive, very nice, stretch arms, hanging on the oar. Body is almost vertical position, there is some leg drive left, but very correct position. Approaching finish, exactly how I pointed out before, very little leg drive, transition point from legs up to upper body, he's still hanging, he's still pressing against the foot stretcher, arms are straight, stretched, all weight is working, his body weight is working, his lats are trying towards the bow. This, in this frame we can see that the legs finish drive, but feel is continuing prying his back and he began to squeeze his arms, but he's still applying his weight. He didn't put his weight on seat and waiting right now for the arms to come, but he's still going backwards using his weight. He's pushing against foot stretches and whole weight of his body is hanged, suspended to the orphan. Even right now, which in in this point when everyone say at the la very last point, just fraction of second before release from the water, but we can see that he is hanging on the oar, he is squeezing the last inches of squeeze of his arms, but back is working to this towards bow. He was able to maintain body weight on the oar. And now body weight is on seat, 
he has relaxed body position, not too stiff, slightly arched shoulders, head straight, nothing unusual. I would say his partner, strong Al Forney, dropped his outside shoulder and is leaning a little bit away from the oar, which is incorrect, but feel number three has very correct body position. You can notice that the other boys are rowing with feathering and Phil is rowing on square blades because he has a couple weeks before Olympics and he was injured, very severe case of tendonitis, so all workouts, even at 36, he was rowing at square blades. Going further through the through his stroke, we see we are back to body preparation position, back to position which I stress so many times as the one of the most important. His hands past knees. He starts taking his slide. His body is vertical. Here it's already slightly bent forward, slightly hunched. He's getting body angle. Here you can see that difference between this frame and previous is very little. He moves slightly his sit forward, but he moves even more his shoulders forward. So it means He's doing all his reach on the first part of the slide. We can see how much, how little movement of the seat on first part of the slide, how a lot reach, how much reach of, of his shoulders forward. Everything is in order to finish reaching out on the first part of the slide. So second part of the slide is going to be done without the reaching, without diving, just thinking about making correct catch. We are approaching catch, he's nicely extended, nice compression of his legs, and watch his hands movement up right now. He put his blade into the water without raising shoulders, only hands went up and legs started dry, dry back. And again we are back to the same frame like before. There is no body opening, just holding, hanging on the oar and driving legs back. Still hanging, still not opening. Transition point. Now we can watch all his motion, motion in slow motion. It's done smoothly, steady speed without any dramatic acceleration or deceleration of the motion. Now let's analyze quickly gold medal Coxpert from Italy. Body preparation middle of slide, strong very nice around shoulders, arms stretched, body angle, bowman a little bit rigid but also already prepared. Slide, further extension. 
position, touch, extremely compressed position, nice around the shoulders, beautiful flexibility, especially stroke when arms stretch, stretched forward. Catch, only hands are raised up, beginning of stroke, powerful leg drive, Strongman almost creating shooting seat. Bowman very nice position, hanging on the old driving legs without body opening. Approaching middle of drive, upper body is hanging, arms are stretched. Strong leg drive. Approaching finish, legs are done. Nice pendulum of upper body, and start stretching, body suspended on the arm. Especially Bowman, it's excellent body position. Legs are down and he's still trying his back backwards and squeezing arms simultaneously. Approaching finish, weight is going down to the seat, arms are finishing the last part of the seat. Release from the water, nicely curve shoulders without chest sticking up, without any stiffness in upper body, everything is very relaxed, hands go out and they are ready to start recover. Now we have USA Cox Fair bronze medal, let's see how they row and some analyze their technique. We are in the middle of slide. It's body are quite nicely curved, but you can see that his arms are not stretched as much forward as we can remember Italian head. Uh, he's already dipping down, hands are, arms are directed not horizontally forward, but too much down towards it. Gano, so we can expect some kind of skying, and you can see that still hands go towards the gano. Now they approach catch. We don't have the same compression like Italians. We don't have the same body flexibility and body curve, but seat. It's quite. What the show? With the shots right now, and what we were talking about, all this and everything, we usually know, coaches know, we have a couple of problems. First of all, it's communication from coach to the athlete. And secondary, to develop this good image, good model of correct stroke, and explain very precisely each point of the wrong stroke. So when we try to correct our athlete, there is no misunderstanding what we are talking about. There is not enough to make one call and he's able to react and to correct. That's why I think using video tapes, some movie loops and showing good model and to develop this image so they can close eyes and they know how they should look like it's first principle of good teaching approach. And secondary is to be very precise on execution, to, to be demanding on correct execution of, of some of the drills. I see some people are doing drills just sometimes look like for sake of doing drills. And we are praying God that something is left after doing drills. But I read about 
some people have 27 lives just for the cards or something like that, but I don't think it makes any sense to use so many grids. Just to settle down on a few which really work and and try to do. Using drills, you, it's possible to use drills as the first part of the workout during the warm-up and just to say, okay, 20 minutes drills, please, one minute with force here, on finish, we work on cuts. One minute with force, middle of shins, we work on preparation, body preparation. One minute square blade, swing, work on finish, clean release. You have three minutes, please repeat this six times. So this way you have 18 minutes of drilling, continuous row, without stopping, you are getting something else. Also another good method of introducing technique into your workout without wasting time what usually coaches are worried that they don't have enough time is to to do drills during regular rows. Anytime you are row long distance, 60 minutes steady state, 50 minutes steady state, try to do this in turn in some part of the drills. Physiologically we are all steady state, we have the same heart rate, we are gaining the same physiological but from a te technical point of view, we can roll, for instance, five minutes on my grid, 24, 26. After five minutes, we switch to on regular grid square blades. This way, we can cover 40 minutes of steady state playing, introducing different type of drills without stopping, without interrupting our workout, and we are getting physiological features as well as technical. And that's why I don't believe that we don't have time for technique. There is always time to paddle and we do some hot pressure strokes, slip water pressure strokes. All this stuff can be done in some kind of technical drill with, with something to focus. Okay, 20 minutes we work on catch. Next 20 minutes we work on finish, square break. This way athletes are not bored on long distance goal. They can think about something and we are accomplishing much more than just simple row for 40 minutes and 40 minutes repeating the same mistakes, so we are practically improving our mistakes instead of eliminating them. To develop and to feel hanging and how to apply body, we put ourselves in weak position, so we have to be efficient. We have to use to the most natural way of rowing. So we use exercise, outside arm only, square blade, and we go with two blades in the water, and now we don't have choice. We have to hang to the end and release. We should keep this arm straight as long as possible, and here on the finish just do slight shoulder motion to help to bring this hand to us. Nicely circular motion on the This exercise can be done on the eight by pairs, by fours, even up to sixes, but it's obvious when ball is getting faster, it's much more difficult to throw outside arm. You can, it's possible to do also with the pause. And start from this point to make sure that our body is prepared and then continue with, without force. But you can see how I cannot jerk this arm, it's so weak. So I have to bend, I have to bend, I have to bend, and then bring myself here. 
I'm doing everything to feed out the puts that you have. Next exercise, which would be some kind of continuation of previous one, plus also will correct our body position during whole stroke and will help a little bit. It will be easier, it's possible to row whole eight. It will be easier on balance. Is rowing out wide grip. So also square, square blade, hand is here very lightly or some coaches ask to keep like this, come eliminate grip, eliminate any tension and you go forward and this drill really teaches you to rotate body, not to collapse on catch away from your or only with your shoulders, to follow your or with your shoulders, so to, or to rotate a little bit, to keep outside shoulder up instead many rowers have this body point. So keep it up here. Rotation, ten, 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 and finishing also a little bit on your side. This drill is excellent drill to eliminate leaning away from the oar. You are and because you have to apply outside arm to the very end. Leaning away usually happens when people throw stiff rigid inside arm and they are pushed away from the oar. Probably you are you can picture this type of technique. And they have to lean to eliminate the stiffness. We have to pull more by outside and lean to the oar to have very similar angle of our shoulder with the oar. That's why we use a lot of wide grip and lean to the top. Rotation, top. There is the same principle. Lean, hang, and accelerate. Swing. Like the last part of the slide, like the 
the last part of this draw, practically half, the last half slide, when body open and legs finish working, body is taking upper, body is taking over. The left square break. And teaching smooth recovery. Not to do, not to go back and forward, some kind of sit-ups, but finish here, hands down, hands away, and then pull shoulders down forward. So we are getting good body preparation. We step up, have a lot of tension here. That's often, I can stay even five minutes like this. It's a lot of tension here, and start going. Now, square blades keep you to finish like this, very circular, very smooth, very free motion. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, I guess you noticed, I, I roll all the session I'm doing with my feet out, just, that also can be done as a, some kind of drill to teach people to hang, to press foot stretches and to hang on, hang on the oar instead of hanging on your straps and going backwards and practically not applying any pressure to the oar. Very often it happens that the oar is already over water and person is still going back, like second leg back, and everything is here, holds on shoes, on straps, which is completely useless motion. We are using to define our labor, how much of the power of our body application to the end, very often we use this as a drill, rolling with feet out of foot stretches. Practically with my European background, I never paid too much attention to the catch, and I learned everything about the catch from you American coaches, so some stuff might not be precisely like you want, but I think I learned quite well. Uh, so, anytime we talk about catch, it's also some kind of controversy about catch. Some people are talking about fast catch, some people are talking about strong catch, some people talk about direct catch. And I learned from watching American crews, I learned that from watching Europeans that we should talk about direct catch, not necessarily strong catch. We talk about placement versus hitting. We talk about locking blade in the water versus just slamming, hammering the water. Uh, what it means, we are trying to put blade in the water, place blade in the water before any action to the blade occurs, before we press legs, before open the body. We, very often we talk that catch has to be part of recovery. What we mean by this that on the last part of our slide, we already commit ourselves to the catch. And while we are still going forward in recovery, we are doing catch. We place blade in the water, it goes down into the water, and action of legs occurs just one one moment later so it is it looks like slide touch drop slide touch drop of course in full speed 
everything should be very well synchronized. And that's extremely difficult. In my opinion, missing a little bit of water and putting the blade slightly too late still doesn't slow down boat, doesn't break check on the boat there's a strong backsplash. I don't know, I remember I saw some schools which were specializing in backsplash. They were coming after flood water, more cover, they had 20 gallons of water in, in boat because they were training backsplash. This synchronization is so difficult that we use different drills to synchronize time, time of, of placing blade in the water and first action of your leg drive. Uh, Steve Gladstone working with me right now is describing that you go and you are very relaxed, you make touch, and one moment later, action starts, delayed action, but you have to be extremely relaxed here and start action, all tension has to occur after placement was done. Some people are getting set and getting tense even before. It's obvious they will miss this point of synchronization, catch versa leg drive. Uh, Ted Washburn is doing, is using some drill very interesting on running water tank. They place blade into the water and he asked, just stop in this moment. And practically all is flowing, dripping and pushing to the point that all is dripping, pushing hands and then action of legs. Everything is done in order to teach to separate touch from drive, because the most common mistake is drive and touch, open and touch, pressing legs and touch, so missing a lot of water and missing, completely placing. <coughs> so going again to each catch, we use pause, on finish, coming, hop, placement and stop. Without taking stroke in the water, you go back and you do the same repeat. Going, squaring, and without taking stroke. Second. Here. Second is just with rowing in the water. Finish position, you go. Placement, drive, and stop. Slide, placement, drive, and stop. I've been using some kind of combination. I ask to have quite fast placement and very slow drift in the water, still for the same purpose of separation, catch from dry. So it looks like this pause coming, quite crispy, snappy catch, and he 
in an easy drive. As I found the rowers had really hard time to execute this drill. They wanted pass cut from our full drive. Instead just direct cut direct cut and easy cut. So to make very strong definition and difference between cut and drive. Those are the best exercises to to teach cut as a placement, as a part of recovery versa. Cut taking missing water versa cut as a part of drive. Okay. Are there any other Questions and they are not related to how it should be done, but what to do in case that someone is doing this type of mistake, is making this type of mistake, or the other one. Let's try to go very quickly through the most common mistakes. I will try to show how they look like so it's easier to identify, and my opinion how to eliminate them, how to correct them, how to attempt, attempt to correct. Someone can have different opinion and say that's my opinion, it's not necessarily has to be the best one. Uh, like we talked at the beginning, due to lack of body preparation, we have many people starting slide with straight body or even leaning backwards, going like this, and Diving on the couch, usually diving away from the from the oar. This is also related with very stiff body. So a rigid upper body he goes like this forward. Now he knows he has to reach. He reaches forward. What is happening? Sit due to this rapid reaching out and dropping outside shoulder down, see this sliding back. So it puts him very weak body position and of course very high plate level. That's very common situation on catch. Next is he has to put blade into the water. He lifts himself and blade is put into the water by raising up upper body. So it is hammer, it is not placement. It's very heavy motion, missing water. In the meantime, seed is already halfway down. Use this dropping, lifting, and very little legs is left. So this is chain of mistake I call, it. and it starts from lack of body preparation. To correct all this stuff, I would definitely use white grip, which, and maybe with pause, which will teach good body position, rotation on cut to keep the shoulder up, rotation, hanging, and fit. 
finishing on also a little bit on your side. Next, a very common mistake is leaning away due to tension and rowing and taking almost all pressure on inside arm. Usually you can see when rowers row, I know that this type of muscle is muscle. You can see tension on inside arm and here very relaxed outside. So it looks like this.
and I would advise a lot to go with pause and finish to, to develop very good placement in the water and very uniform slide, very uniform sliding type of recovery so ladies steady speed down into the water. Don't do that again. Some people are changing blade level during recovery several times. And very common mistake is they are too close to the water level here in the middle of recovery. And then they start squaring, coming up, and getting into the water. If we are on certain level, it's uniform squaring into the water. the oar now in the last part but leaning away 
a little bit too much. Red cover, you can see this. Hartman is drawing, dropping his elbow, outside elbow down, he's leaning away from the oar. Recovery, beginning of the slide. Bodies are very straight. The moment when we are taking slide. And here it starts body preparation. And we work on body preparation a lot, so this often makes quite a big improvement. Here we have Karkinen, gold medal on single in, eight, in Olympic Games in 84. Let's watch his technique. It's very noticeable, beautiful rhythm, very fluid motion, steady speed. There is no deceleration or acceleration in any part of his stroke. And if we start, if we want to analyze frame by frame, very nice body position, driving legs, crying, uh, a little bit too, there is some slight motion up, which I would, which I don't like, but it doesn't matter if I like, if I don't like, he has gold medals, and I guess three gold medals, so that's what counts the most. But if I really want, would like to be very picky, I would eliminate this upright motion and try to try a little bit more horizontally. The end of leg drive, last push of legs, pendulum upper body, squeezing arms simultaneously, back position nice, around shoulders, very relaxed chest, not tension chest, around shoulders, hands, Go away, shoulders immediately around, follow the arms and hands, half slide, excellent body preparation, half slide, body angle, nice body angle, nice relaxed shoulders, nice arms stretched forward. Last part of slide, nothing is happening, maintaining only position in the middle of slide, almost full reach is already done, nicely around shoulders, arms stretched, nice body angle. Approaching catch, there is no additional extension, the same around shoulders, arms stretched, very natural, very relaxed position. Moment of the cut, nothing is changing. The same extension, the same natural position. Many of our of our athletes are having here straight, very rigid position, which coaches call them sit up, support yourself, sit up, but that's not correct. That's how it should be. It's rich forward, stretched, relaxed. Drive, catch was made only by lifting hands, body position hasn't changed. Leg drive, now beginning of opening, continuation of leg drive. Transition point, hanging on the oar, driving legs, upper body is hanging, finishing legs, still hanging on the oar, squeezing arms, and finish. And hands out, around shoulders, relax, follow, arms stretch, reaching out. Beautiful position in the middle of slide with full body preparation ready for the catch.